Hi, everyone. This is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to Stop Writing Alone. A lot went on last week and my last week of the first season of Stop Writing Alone. And one story that I shared in the Stop Writing Alone Facebook group, I did actually record for this week's episode. And then when it came time to produce the episode and edit, it just didn't feel like it fit. But it still feels like something that I need to share with you. I want to talk about the hidden beams in our dream house. As we build our dreams, our writing dreams, there are support systems that we put in place. And that's a lot of where Stop Writing Alone comes from, where those first people that you meet and share your dreams of writing with, they all help keep this thing moving forward. And so I want to share with you what I recorded earlier this week about one of my hidden beams and what I discovered this this week about her, what I wrote about her, and I just wanted to share it with you because without Elisa, who you'll learn about in a moment, Stop Writing Alone wouldn't exist. She really pushed me a little bit further with the local writing group, as you'll hear, and made me realize on a different level how writing with others is not only important to me, but needed for all of us. So I'm not going to repeat the story now because I already recorded it. I didn't know where it belonged. It didn't really belong in the episode before. So here's one last bonus episode for season one of Stop Writing Alone. And it feels really, really appropriate that I don't end this year without sharing this story with you. I think all of this has come to the surface for me and been very clear to me because if you are following on Facebook in the Stop Writing Alone group, you know that last week I learned about the death of a member of the Staten Island Writing Group. And it wasn't easy when I found out. When you join a writing group, It's a different kind of friendship. You are connected around a common dream and a common goal. And you may or may not share many other things in your life. You come to writing group to get that experience because everyone else in your life is just not into it. And there's so many things like this in life. Any a lot of hobbies that people have, they have to find their space, their people, because maybe, you know, everyone under their roof is just like, I'm not into that. So you come to writing group with the intention of pursuing a certain dream or hobby or just, you know, enjoying yourself. And when you find someone else that is also into that, there is an instant camaraderie an instant connection, because this person gets you in a way that not everyone else in your life does. And this is one of the very beautiful things about writing community and the ability to stop writing alone. So I've had this instant connection and camaraderie with a number of people. I have been blessed to be in uh, this local writing group for many years now. And I've had this instant camaraderie with a lot of people online that I've been blessed to meet over our shared love of the pursuit of story. When I joined the Staten Island Writers Group, there was someone else who was the organizer of it, and I was merely a member. And after a number of years, she gave up the mantle because she had become a digital nomad off of her writing. She was able to live internationally and write and earn her living that way. And it was amazing. And we were all so happy for her, but we also needed the group to stay alive. And that's when I stepped up and decided to help co-organize it, even though I had no idea what I was doing. (laughs) After a year or so of that, There was a new member who had joined, who was a mother, 
and she was an immigrant. She was born in Italy, so we had also a little bit of uh, connection over our shared Italian culture, although she was born in the motherland where I was just taught about it from my grandparents. And one of the things that she needed being a mother of a six-year-old was time to write. And so she asked if we could incorporate that into our writing group. And I had heard of write-ins before, and I said, you know what, I think we can do that. Let's find a space. Let's do it. First, we did Barnes & Noble. Then we went off to the library. We, we bounced around, and we would do an hour or two hours of writing. I think, it actually, we went up to almost three hours of writing together. Sometimes there was this one other guy that would come with us, and it would be really funny because this guy was a character in and of himself. But Elisa and I would connect over our writing and just this shared time. And I appreciated her for making this happen for our writing group, even though it wasn't our most popular meeting. It was just this shared love and time to devote to the thing that we wanted to pursue. After about a year, maybe even two years of these meetups, Elisa was getting comfortable with her story and wanted to share it in our critique group. So she even came to the critique meeting sharing her story, which I was so excited about because I had been with her for so long building this story. And we had started to get to a point where she was getting ready to mold it into the things she always wanted it to be. But it didn't last long. She didn't come to maybe the third meeting after she had started critiquing. And so I reached out to see how she was doing and worried that she was feeling some sort of imposter syndrome or not confident in her writing or did a certain critique land the wrong way that she was now feeling she didn't want to share. I was just worried. And at the time, she wrote to me that she had been diagnosed with a disease that she was struggling with. And she was gonna need some time because it was starting to attack her central nervous system. And she was gonna start treatments that she knew were going to suck her energy. And she wasn't really able to commit to a writing. And so I sat there looking at this text and just sobbed. Here was a woman that I met with once a month, maybe twice a month if she came to the critique meetings as well. And I missed her already. And so I wrote back to her saying, you know, of course I understood. You have to take a break sometimes. You have to fly south. You have to recoup. And I told her that if she needed me at any time just for a cup of coffee, no writing related, nothing at all, you know, I'd be there. And she said she didn't even think she had energy for coffee at the time. So I said, when you're ready. And then life went on. And at the time, to be perfectly honest, I was struggling with certain losses in my life. And I did not feel that I was equipped to be the support that she needed. So I did not continue to reach out. And it is a thing that I think I will always regret because you don't need to be strong to support someone. You just need to be there. But the strange nature of writing group and the relationships that you develop in writing group is that you are close without being close. I don't even know how to explain it. And what I mean is the simple fact that I was so close to this woman, and yet I did not know her last name. <laughs> because we had connected over Meetup, and her profile name was whatever, and in my phone I had her as her first name, and her last name was Writing Group, so that I could find her easily, it never occurred to me to ever ask her last name. And so when I did start to feel stronger, and started to think, my goodness, I haven't heard from her. I reached out through text again and calls and received no answer and did not know if that 
meant anything. And through a weird twist of fate this past weekend, I found out her last name. And I googled her full name to see if maybe she moved or if she just wasn't writing anymore. I I was just, you know, maybe she changed her phone number. Who knows? But of course, if you're following on the Facebook group, you know that what I ultimately found was an obituary. It wasn't a shock because I knew she was sick, but that didn't make it hurt any less. And so I will read what I wrote on the night that I found out that she was gone. And then she was gone. There are people in your life that you see every day that you know you can't live without. Losing them is like tearing a wall off your home, exposing you to the elements with nowhere to hide. It hurts. Everyone knows you're hurting and why. You can hide from nothing. However, in the exposure, the world outside can see that you need to be rallied around. They can see you need lumber, insulation, paint, brick, mortar, maybe even a couple of hands to help you rebuild. And then you put the time in, building brick by brick until there is protection and normalcy again. There are other people in your life, however, that don't serve as your walls. You don't see them every day, maybe not even every week, but when you see them, you are grateful. You are there for them and they are there for you in a way not many others can be. They stand like a hidden beam that is, of course, weight-bearing. They help you hold up one of your dreams. They are so important. When time passes and your routine visits start to fade, at first you think this is normal. Even though I don't see that beam, it is still there. But when more time passes, you start to wonder, is it? Do I need to reinforce it? So you go looking, unsure which wall it is behind. You knock and knock and knock without finding it. You wonder if it crumbled, but in the meantime, You have finally started adding other beams to that part of your home because in the beam's absence, you recognize the need for such structural reinforcement in a place so important to you. And then one day, when you've added so many beams to that dream wall that you can't hide them anymore, that day you remember where the beam was. You smash open the wall so you can see it and you find that it crumbled while you were busy building. You weren't there to help support it. You left it in the dark, and now it is gone. This is a secret loss that doesn't do enough external damage for anyone else to notice. But you know. You will always know. The beam is gone, and your house would have tumbled without it. And you miss it. And you are sorry. Sorry you didn't at least open the wall up to let a little light in before it fell. Rest in peace, Elisa. I miss you and thank you. Your job this week, your job this weekend, is to find your hidden beams, take a moment to say thank you. And to all of you out there, that are those many, many beams that I now see and can't ignore. Thank you so much for holding this house up and being the support that I need all the time. Thank you for listening.